Welcome friends. Today I will be discussing about chronic bronchitis which is a type of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So before we get into the detail about the chronic bronchitis, just a few points about what is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So as the name is suggesting, there is some obstruction in the respiratory tract and that obstruction can be at any level that is from the trachea to the smallest airways and the obstruction can be either the partial or the complete. So all these things they will result in the functional disability of the lungs. So the, con the conditions, all the conditions which have the obstruction which will be affecting the functional disability of the lungs have been included in the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease are included in the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases are chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchial asthma and bronchitis. Today in this video we will be discussing only about the chronic bronchitis. Now chronic bronchitis and emphysema they go hand in hand. Chronic bronchitis if it is left off it leads to emphysema. Now coming to the definition of the chronic bronchitis, itis means it is the inflammation. So bronchitis means there is an inflammation of the bronchi and the bronchioles. But the definition what they have given is a clinical definition. That is, if the person has a persistent cough with expectoration for at least three months of the year for the two or more consecutive years, in the absence of any other identifiable cause, they call it as a chronic bronchitis. Any other identifiable cause means if the patient is having the tuberculosis where he also has the cough, then it's not included in the chronic bronchitis. Or if the patient is having some tumor, bronchial carcinoma that is causing the cough, that is also not included in the chronic bronchitis. That's why they have given very clearly in the definition that patient has cough with the expectoration but in the absence of any other identifiable cause. Now this is more common in the men in India when compared to the women. So this everybody knows this is because of their smoking habit. The men are the men has more incidence of the chronic bronchitis. Now coming to the pathogenesis of the chronic bronchitis here we have the factors which initiate the process and then once the process starts the further bacterial and the viral infections, they will be maintaining and exacerbating the disease. So initiating factor is whatever the dust, the tobacco smoke or the dust during his occupation when the person is exposed, whatever he inhales, that dust will start the inflammatory process. So that is the initiating factor. Once the inflammatory process starts, this process will be further super added by the bacterial and the viral infections which will exacerbate the disease. Now this is more common in the heavy smokers. It's 4 to 10 times it's more common in the heavy smokers. Now coming uh, to the pathogenesis, what exactly happens in the chronic bronchitis is due to the inhaled dust or the smoke, there is a hypersecretion of the mucus. Now normally also when we inhale the dust, the normal mechanism what goes on is there is a mucus secretion the dust particles will be trapped in the mucus and this dust along with the mucus is expelled out by the cough reflex so when we are inhaling a lot of the dust inside the person who is inhaling he will have the hyper secretion of the mucus and for this hyper secretion of the mucus there will be hypertrophy of the submucosal glands so this dust particle which has been inhaled it will produce inflammatory reactions so when it produces inflammatory reactions, we have the inflammatory cells coming there. That is the neutrophils mainly. These neutrophils, when they come there, they release the proteases along with the mediators. These mediators will further exacerbate the inflammatory reactions and the proteases which are released by them, they will cause the destruction of the tissue. Now, along with this hypertrophy of the submucosal glands, even we have increase in the goblet cells and the small airways like the bronchi and the bronchioles along with the hypertrophy of the submucosal glands we have increase in the goblet cells in the lining epithelium of the bronchi and the bronchioles now coming to the each individual etiological factor how it causes is as i told you the tobacco smoke is the one which causes which causes increased risk of four to ten times now how it causes is 
it impairs the ciliary movement so normally the respiratory tract is lined by ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium so the cilia which is present on the epithelium it will be uh, having the movement which will be expelling of the dust and the mucus which is produced so if there is an impaired ciliary movement what happens the mucus which is produced as an reaction to the inhaled dust it gets accumulated there only and now actually that mucus which is present there it becomes a very good source for the growth of the bacteria and causes a secondary infection so first thing what the smoking does is tobacco smoke it impairs the ciliary movement so there is no clearance of the mucus which is produced then it inhibits the function of the alveolar macrophages the function of alveolar macrophages is the engulf of the any other foreign material which enters into the body and removes it so this tobacco smoke even it inhibits the function of the macrophages the macrophages come there but the function is not there then because of this dust there is hypertrophy hyperplasia of the mucus secreting glands and this mucus which has not been cleared this will cause the obstruction of the small airways and another one mechanism is this inflammatory reaction during this inflammatory reaction it stimulates even the vagus so that causes the bronchoconstriction so as a whole there is an obstruction to the airflow so other etiological factors are the atmospheric pollution or the occupational exposure to the dust so the mechanism is the same as we see in the tobacco smoke so like in the conditions where um, in the silicosis where he is exposed to silica dust or in the asbestos if the person is working in the asbestos factories he is exposed to the asbestos particles so when he inhales them so that also causes an inflammatory reaction similarly if the person is a farmer then he inhales the cotton dust what we call it as a condition we call it as a bisnosis so it can be organic or the inorganic substances or the person who is exposed to the atmospheric pollution anything which he inhales that inhaled dust it produces the same inflammatory reactions and the infections will be exacerbating the inflammatory reactions and some familial and the genetic factors like what we see in cartkerner syndrome and the immotile cilia syndrome now in both these conditions the ciliary action is not there because of which the mucus which is produced it gets accumulated there only causing the obstruction to the bronchi and the bronchioles and that will be causing a very good source for the growth of the bacteria so this is about the etiopathogenesis now totally as a brief we have so tobacco smoke and other environmental pollutants when a person inhales that causes the chronic irritation of the airways along with that as i told you the tobacco smoke it interferes with the ciliary action of the respiratory epithelium and it damages even the airway epithelium so because of this what happens the mucus which is produced is not removed and that helps in the growth of the bacteria because the protein in the mucus it acts as a very good source for the growth of the bacteria and the the bacteria and the mucus it's not cleared off so they is unable to clear the bacteria from the airways so chronic irritation of the airways along with the bacteria all this these two conditions they cause hypertrophy of the submucosal glands in the trachea and the bronchi and also as i told you there is an increase in the goblet cell so as a whole because of all these conditions there is increase in the mucus which causes a reversible airway obstruction this reversible airway obstruction further causes injury to the airways which causes bronchitis which causes an inflammatory reaction that causes chronic bronchitis or just the bacteria bacterial infection can also cause the chronic bronchitis now when we see the morphology of the organ what changes we see in the bronchi is grossly when we see the bronchial wall there is a thickened bronchial wall this is due to the hypertrophy of the submucosal glands thickness is increased because of the hypertrophy of the submucosal glands and even we have the hyperemic and the edematous mucous membrane due to the inflammatory process and as there is an increased secretion of the mucus lumina of the bronchi and the bronchioles they will be blocked by the mucus plux and we see the purulent exudate in the lumen this is grossly what we see now this is a normal one where we have a very thinned out mucosal surface and this is the cartilage so what happens in the chronic bronchitis is you have a thickened edematous mucosa and you have a hyperemic mucosa this is because of hypertrophy of the submucosal glands and because of the inflammatory reaction 
Now, this is just a diagrammatic picture. So, as I told you, you have an increased secretion of the mucus, what you are seeing in the lumen. So, if the bronchioles are very small, the lumen is completely blocked off by the mucus which is produced. But as the epithelium is damaged, the mucus gets accumulated there only and there is a secondary bacterial infection. Now, when we see the microscopic examination, in the microscopic examination, we have enlargement of the mucus secreting glands and you have increase in the number of the goblet cells. And one important thing here is there is an increase in the read index. Now, what is a read index? Read index is the ratio between the thickness of the submucosal glands in the cartilage containing large airways to that of the total bronchial wall from subepithelial basement membrane to inner perichondrium. So we have to see the ratio of the uh, submucosal glands to the thickness of the wall. So that usually it will be 0.4 or less than 0.4. So in this bronchitis, there is an increase in the submucosal glands. So we have increase in the read index. Now this is a normal uh, bronchial wall where you have a ciliated type of the epithelium here. This is subepithelial tissue and these are the seromucinous glands what you see normally. So these are the mucinous glands and this is no filic one are the serous glands and this is the cartilage where you are seeing the chondrocytes here. This is the normal thickness. Now if you see here the glands are increased and predominantly they are the mucin secreting glands and here the epithelium is somewhat shut off you don't see epithelium continuously and this is the cartilage so the ratio is what i told you the read index which is important is the thickness of the submucosal glands to the thickness of the sub epithelial basement membrane to the perichondrium the ratio of these two what they take it as a read index now if you see here these are the glands and this is the thickness of the glands so the thickness of the glands is increased so when we take the ratio of this submucosal glands to the ratio of the subepithelial basement membrane to the perichondrium it exceeds more than 0.4 and this is the characteristic feature of chronic bronchitis now this was histological this was what i was telling i think you can make out the ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium with the few goblet cells these are the few goblet cells one two and the three goblet cells what you're seeing here and this is the one which is in the chronic bronchitis the number of the goblet cells all these are the blue things in the goblet cells so you can make out that the number of the goblet cells are increased in the lining epithelium of the bronchitis now what other changes we can see is squamous metaplasia of the bronchial epithelium now why does metaplasia occurs normally also the metaplasia occurs as a protective mechanism. Metaplasia means one epithelium changes into the other. So why the metaplasia should occur here is when you have a ciliated columnar type of the epithelium, once because of the inhaled dust, if the epithelium is damaged, then the epithelium is shed off. The underlying tissue is exposed. So as a protective mechanism, what our body does is the single layered columnar epithelium is replaced by multi-layered stratified squamous epithelium so that if the dust causes damage on the superficial layers, the superficial layers are shed off, but the underlying, the basal layer will be continuously proliferating. So the tissue will never be exposed off. So hence, whenever there is a chronic irritation or the inflammatory reaction, there we have a metaplastic change and we have a squamous metaplasia. And as I told you, we have an inflammatory reaction. So we see the chronic inflammatory cell infiltrate. Along with that, after the inflammatory process, the final uh, change in the inflammation is we have a fibrosis. So if the fibrosis is severe, then because of the contracture after the fibrosis, it causes the obliteration of the small airways, small bronchioles, what we call it as a bronchiolitis obliterans. Okay, the bronchiolitis obliterans is nothing but it is the fibrosis which causes the obstruction to the lumen of the small bronchioles. Now, this is a microscopic photograph. This is the ciliated epithelium, what you're seeing here, it is shed off. And this is a basement membrane, thickened basement membrane, and this is a subepithelial edematous tissue. And all these are the chronic inflammatory cells. 
Now you see all these blue dots are nothing but their lymphocytes in the plasma cells and these are the congested blood vessels. So you have an inflammatory reaction, edematous subepithelial tissue and here you see the small bronchioles. These are the small airways which are filled up with the mucus plug. This blue color what you are seeing in the lumen is the mucin. So it is completely blocked by this mucinous material. Now what are the clinical features? That was about the morphology. So we have seen about the cross and the microscopic changes. So uh, anything, all the changes what occur is mainly because of the hypertrophy of the submucosal glands and because of increase in the goblet cells. So clinical features when we see usually it is the elderly age group that is in the fourth and the fifth decade but usually it can occur at any age if the, if, uh, the exposure to the dust occurs at any age this can occur. So common presenting feature is as we have seen in the definition the common presenting feature is cough with expectorations. But because of the cough and the severe respiratory uh, pulmonary obstruction the patient may develop the cyanosis. He, he may develop the cyanosis because of the pulmonary obstruction that is because of the bronchial obstruction or uh, because of this mucinous plugs. So, so he may develop the cyanosis and later on because of this pulmonary hypertension he may develop the heart failure also. But as the patient develops the cyanosis these patients are termed as a blue bloaters because cyanosis leads to the blueness so they have been termed as a blue bloaters. Now what are the consequences what happens is so we have the mucus plugs because of the hypersecretion and because there is no ciliary action we have all the retention of the excitate in the mucus in the alveoli. So that mucus and the excitate it is a very good protonaceous source for the growth of the bacteria. So the patient develops a secondary bacterial infection and this secondary bacterial infection can lead to pneumonia. So pneumonia if there is an exacerbation acute exacerbation of the pneumonia and finally final stages of the pneumonia is organization. So when the when it is healing by the organization the two things can occur either it can cause obliteration of the alveoli or the healing can occur by the fibrosis. So when the fibrosis is going on like if you remember any patient has an injury and there is a fibrosis there will be contracture of the scar tissue. Similarly when there is a fibrosis there will be a contracture and when it is contracting it will drag along with it the air spaces so that will lead to the emphysema. So either you have obliteration of the alveoli or the patient may develop emphysema. So the complications as I told you is the patient may develop the emphysema or the patient may develop the corpal male. Corpal male means he will develop some changes in the right heart. This is because there is an obstruction to the airflow and because of the fibrosis even to the blood flow in the pulmonary vasculature. So patient may develop pulmonary hypertension. Because of that there will be a back pressure on the right heart. So there will be some structural changes in the right heart. That can, that's what we call it as a core pulmonary. And if the condition continues the patient may land up in, even in the heart failure. And the patient will have repeated bacterial infection. This is because of the accumulation of the mucus. So these are the complications. So the main complications are emphysema, core pulmonary and heart failure. So that finishes about the chronic bronchitis. Thank you friends for listening patiently to my talk. Thank you.